Today we're leaving our home port in Brigantine, New Jersey. We're going to head out past the casinos Atlantic City, through Absecon Bay, 8.2 miles due southeast to the Great Egg Reef. It's late August, the flounder are schooling offshore, and we're going to go out there and see if we can catch our limit. Okay, now we're back at the house here. We're going to prepare the flounder that you saw us catch today. And I'm going to do it in a way that you may not have seen before. I'm going to combine it with angel hair pasta and a pan tomato sauce. Now, it's often a challenge to cook flounder without adding a lot of added fat or deep frying it in some way. That's because there's not a lot of fat content in flounder, and it doesn't have much flavor of its own. And it has a nice texture, but you have to really build some flavors around it. So that's what we're going to do now. So you want to take some peeled garlic, and you want to cut it on the bias, which means you're going to cut it kind of sideways in thin strips. Now I like to cut it this way because it adds a lot of cross-sectional area to the garlic and it can release a lot of flavor but you also can uh, avoid eating it if you, if you have an aversion to big pieces. So we're going to cut it in a bias like this as you see. So we're going to use about four cloves today and should be just perfect. Now you want to start with a slow pan or some, a pan that you just turn the heat on. Reason being is you don't want to burn the garlic. So you want to put the oil in right away and you want to use a lot of it. All right? Olive oil is very healthy fat, but it also adds a tremendous amount of flavor. So you want to add enough to really co cover the bottom of the pan. And then you're going to put the garlic in, like I said, right away. Now you also want to put the salt, pepper, and we're going to use red pepper flakes, lots of them too. Uh, this is a spicy kind of a Sicilian dish, so we want to make sure that we got enough flavor in there. So we're going to put pepper, red pepper flake, and salt. That looks about right. I'm going to salt the pasta water while we're at it. Now the pan will start to get hot and you want to make sure that you don't burn the garlic. If you start with burnt garlic, the dish is going to be bitter and you should start over from scratch. So you want to keep an eye on at this stage of, of the cooking process. Yeah. All right, so now the heat is coming uh, up to uh, temperature here. You can see it's starting to sizzle, sizzle a little bit. So you don't want to burn the garlic at this point. So you really want to watch it. Keep it moving. And you just want to start to smell the flounder. You don't want to brown it at all. Right. Now the next ingredient is going to be whole peeled tomatoes. All right, so I'll use about half of these. And cherry tomatoes. Now this is a little twist here because uh, what happens is the tomatoes kind of burst in your mouth when you're eating the flounder and it really adds a nice level uh, to the dish. So we're gonna bring that to the simmer. We're also gonna add some white wine. Generous portion there. And we're going to add some parsley. Now, flat leaf Italian parsley is what we're using today. And we're going to add half of it now and half of it later. You want to add some layers of flavor to the dish. So we're going to add some parsley that's cooked into the sauce. And then at the end, we'll put some fresh to add that dimension as well. So this needs to come to the simmer. And we're going to reduce it down by about a third. And the dish is ready to go. While we're waiting for the, uh, the sauce to reduce, I wanted to point out something about flounder. Now, the under white belly is actually more flavorful than the upper part. The upper part is more exercised. It has less fat. So if you have a choice and you're doing the filleting, I would put away the, the, the bottom pieces, and you'll notice a big difference in flavor. So you can see now the sauce is reduced by about a third. It's still quite liquid, but it's going to cook a little bit longer, but it's, it's just about ready. 
All right, so the sauce is reduced almost enough. So what we're going to do now is actually steam the flounder in the sauce. Then when we toss it with the pasta, we're going to break it up. It's going to actually look like crab meat. And uh, keep your eyes closed. You can think like it is, too. All right, so these are going to steam. Once they're almost completely cooked, then we're going to drop our pasta. So you can see the flounder steaming. It's starting to be become white around the edges and it's almost finished. So the flounder is just about perfectly cooked here. Now I'm going to turn the heat off and we're going to drop our pasta. Now we have to keep a real good eye on the pasta. This is angel hair and it, it can get overcooked very quickly. And we're going to actually cook the pasta in the pan half, half the time. So we don't want this al dente, we want even before al dente. So it's going to be um, just barely wilted before we're going to drain it. All right, so the, the angel hair has been in there for about two and a half, three minutes at the most. And we're going to make sure it's extremely al dente because it's still going to cook in the sauce for a while. And it's going to absorb a lot of the flavor. So we don't want it to be mushy by the time the pan sauce is done. So I'm going to restart the pan. Flounder is nice and cooked. It's ready to, to be tossed. So we're going to add the angel hair right to the pan. And we're literally going to toss the flounder in the sauce. And you can see the flounder kind of breaks up and it kind of does look like crab meat a little bit. So it's poor, me, poor man's crab meat here today. You can see that the angel hair is absorbing all the liquid that's in the pan, and we're going to have a very nice pasta dish here. Just needs to cook a little bit longer. All right, so you can see here, look, look closely. If you, if you pull the pasta up and you, and you see a lot of liquid falling down, you can see it right here. That means it's not quite absorbed yet. So what you want to do is cut the heat, and you want to let the pasta rest. Give it a couple of minutes just to soak up some more juice without cooking it anymore. And the flavors are kind of mellow into each other, so you can just really enjoy the pasta. So I'm going to give it about four minutes just to sit here and do nothing off the heat. So you, you lift up. See how there's not a lot of liquid coming to the bottom of the pan? That's perfect right there. And there's a lot of the starch that's from the pasta. It's kind of thickened the juices, and it's made a really nice coating or condiment, as we say, for the pasta. Now, <clears throat> before service, you always want to fresh it up a little bit. So we're going to add a little bit of fresh parsley back to it. We're going to give it a fresh coat of olive oil. We're going to brighten it up with that. And we're going to give it a little salt and pepper just at the end. We're going to make sure everything tastes real good. So now we're ready to eat. Right, so we're going to plate up the pasta. We're going to make sure you get a little bit of everything in there. Mound it up in the middle there. And on the sides here, you got all the goodies, the cherry tomatoes, little bits of flounder, pasta. And there you have it. Flounder with angel hair pasta, cherry tomatoes, fresh from the ocean.